Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Rowan Warner 6th-7th Campus Athletic Opportunities Presentation for Opportunity Night. My name is Rich Cross. I am the Assistant Principal Athletic Director at Rowan Warner. Below there you can see my contact information as well as the contact information for Kirsten Bean, who is our Athletics and Attendance Secretary here at the main office. I'm going to give you an overview of what we offer here for Athletics at Rowan Warner. In the fall, uh, which starts in late August and runs until late October, we offer football, sideline cheer, girls basketball, and cross country. For winter one, which runs right after fall sports finish until Christmas break, we offer wrestling and volleyball. For winter two, which runs from the beginning of January, right when we get back from Christmas break, until early March, we offer competitive cheer and boys basketball. And in the spring, which runs from late March, right before spring break until the end of May, we offer track, baseball, and softball. As you can see there, the asterisk denotes individual sports that the MHSAA has allowed sixth graders to start taking part in as of a couple of years ago. So sixth graders can play, excuse me, can run cross country in the fall. They can wrestle in winter one, and they can run track in the spring. Those are the three sports that sixth graders are allowed to play. Uh, our clearance process is pretty standard. Uh, prior to beginning practice, all student athletes must complete the athletic clearance process. Uh, this entails a couple pieces of paperwork that have to be filled out, signed, and returned to the main office. Uh, first and foremost is the physical form. Uh, you must get a physical on the MHSAA physical form. Uh, we have paper copies available here in the main office. They're also available online at appearlightning.com under the forms tab, as well as mhsaa.com. And the physical, in order to be good for this school year, it has to be on or after April 15th of the previous school year. So, for example, a physical done on or after April 15th of 2021 would be valid for the entire 2021-2022 school year. There is also an athletic code of conduct that the parent and student athlete must read and sign, agreeing to make sure their conduct, their grades, things of that nature are all in line with the expectations for our student athletes. And finally, there is an emergency contact or a medical card that needs to be filled out by the parents that will travel uh, to every practice and every game with the coaches. That way, if there's ever an emergency, uh, the coaches, myself, any adult can contact uh, that student's parents if there were to be a need to do so. And finally, the last portion of the clearance process uh, is the eligibility check, which will be done by me prior to the start of the season. And we'll get more into eligibility a couple slides later here. So these three forms, the physical, code of conduct, emergency medical card, all need to be filled out, signed, and turned into Miss Dean in the RW main office prior to the start of the first practice. And again, these forms are all available in the main office on paper. And they're available online at LapeerLightning.com under the More drop-down Forms tab. Uh, once student athletes have turned in all of their paperwork and their grades are good to go, essentially completing the clearance process, they will get a color-coded bracelet, which must be worn to the first couple practices to, again, verify and show the coach that their athletic clearance process has been completed. Another part of the clearance process is pay to participate. Uh, this is a fee that all student athletes must pay prior to the start of the, or prior to the first contest of their respective sport. So if the first football game of the season is on Wednesday, September 17th, they must have their pay to participate fees paid for by then in order to play in that game. Uh, these are a one-time fee. Uh, they cover the student athlete for the entire school year, regardless of the number of sports they play. It's a one-time payment. Uh, the payment amount is a graduated system based on lunch status and grade level. If you look at the diagram here in the bottom right-hand corner, uh, a couple things. You can pay with cash or check in the main office. Please make sure your checks are made out to your community schools. Or you can pay online at payschools.com. Uh, and it's done in a similar manner as you would put money in your student's lunch account. Below that, you'll see uh, the fee scale. Again, if you have free lunch and you're a seventh and eighth grader, it's 20. Reduce is 60. Full price lunch is 120 for the whole year. 
sixth grade because you have less sports that you're eligible to play. The fees are cut in half, 60, 30, and 10. Eligibility. So because our athletes are now student athletes, they're playing, again, a sport for Lapeer Community Schools, for Rowan Warner Middle School, they are students first. Part of the privilege of being able to play sports is you have to keep your grades up. Uh, eligibility is checked each semester. So we check eligibility at the end of the first semester to see if the student can take part in any sports during the second semester. And conversely, we do it at the end of the school year in June, the following first semester of the following school year. Student athletes must pass five of six classes at the end of a semester in order to be eligible to play the following semester. If they've done that, they're eligible to take part in any sport that they choose. And again, like I said, June uh, grades in June, second semester determine eligibility, first semester the following school year. This does not apply to incoming sixth graders, much like ninth graders get a clean slate going into high school, sixth graders get a clean slate coming into middle school. However, their grades at the end of the first semester will determine their eligibility for sports during second semester. Once they're in season, once they decide to play a sport, we check eligibility every Thursday for all sports during that season. So for example, every Thursday during fall season, we check eligibility for every football player, girls basketball player, sideline cheerleader, and cross country runner in sixth or seventh grade. So try to simplify it as much as possible. Our eligibility policy is such, if you are passing all your classes on Thursday, you're eligible, you're good to go. If you are failing two or more classes, you are eligible for the following week. Eligibility periods run a week at a time. We check on Thursday for the following week. So that following week starts Monday morning and Sunday night. So passing everything, you're good. Failing two or more, you are unfortunately ineligible. If you are passing five out of six, it can go one of two ways. If you have a GPA of 2.0 or higher, which means a C average or better, you are eligible, which you're placed on what's called a warning list. You have a meeting with me, you have a progress report, you take around to all your teachers, have them fill it out and sign it, and you return it to me by the end of the day on Friday. If you do that, you're eligible to play the following week. If you are passing five out of six classes and your GPA is unfortunately below 2.0, meaning below a C average across the board, you are eligible for the following week. We check it every Thursday. Students are either eligible or ineligible for one week at a time. I know I've thrown a lot of information at you in a short period of time. If you have any questions regarding anything in this presentation or just anything regarding athletics here at Rowan Warner in general, I urge you to give me a call or shoot me an email whenever you get the chance. You can also contact Mrs. Dean. And again, our contact information is below here on the slide. We appreciate you checking out our video. Hope you have a great rest of the school year. Hope you stay safe, have a good summer, and we're excited to see you here in August. Go Lightning!